in this Stephen Anderson and his lies, number 19, we are going to discuss the place of Israel in the book of Revelation. Let's watch the first clip. And all nations should be in one fold and one shepherd. We should not segregate out church by nationality. There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. God's chosen people are believers. Okay. We should not segregate between the Jews and the Gentiles. Revelation chapter 7. Tribes of Israel. Great multitude of all nations, kindreds, people, tongues. Hmm. How about that? So again, he just denies, openly denies Revelation chapter 7. Let's watch the next video here. See more nutty nonsense. And he gave them a religion like that, and then he kicks them out of their land, scatters them throughout all nations, allows their temple to be destroyed and never to be rebuilt again. Maybe God's not pleased with you. Amen. I mean, think about I mean, they're saying, oh, we can't do our sacrifice because we have no temple. Why doesn't God give you a temple? Because you're in rebellion against God. Yes. That's why. Because you rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. And by saying, well, we have no temple, we can't do animal sacrifice, they're just admitting God's rejected us. God destroyed our temple. We have no place to do sacrifices. You know what? We have a lamb. We have a sacrifice, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And God, was, you know why God allowed that temple to be destroyed? Just to show them, you're done. It's done. The blood of Christ is what cleanses us from sin. Okay. Um, amazing how ignorant this of Scripture this little nut is. And I put the scriptures up there, you know, on the screen so that you could see them. Oh, the temple's destroyed. It's no more. It's never going to be rebuilt. Uh, hello? <laughs> yes, it will be. Matthew chapter 24, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Very clearly, the temple was rebuilt for the last days. But Israel's not mentioned in the book of Revelation. There's no nothing about Israel in the future, you know. Sure, sure, Anderson. Yeah, we understand where you're coming from there. Rome. Let's watch the next video. Now, the Bible talks about them in Revelation 2, 9. And it's funny because sometimes people today will tell you, oh, the book of Revelation covers the tribulation, and the tribulation is all about the Jews. You know, tribulations. All... But, but here's the funny thing. The word Jews is used twice in Revelation. And both times it's calling them the synagogue of Satan. Both times. The only two times you'll find the word Jews in Revelation is in chapters 2 and 3. You say, well, it says Israel over here. Israel and Jews are two different things. Don't have time to go into it. Israel and Jews are two different things. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sure. But, you know, um, the, the word Jews is only used two different times in the, in the book of Revelation. Therefore, it doesn't have anything to do with Israel. Let's check about that. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Now, Anderson there, he said that, uh, you know, it's talking about the Jews there. Revelation 2, 9 and Revelation 3, 9, both references to the Jews. That's the only two references to the Jews. Revelation 2, 9 and Revelation 3, 9 are not references to Jews. Let's look at it. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Nine. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Can a physical Jew that's over in Israel, even if they don't believe in Judaism, could they say that they are Jews and be telling the truth? Yes, they can. Right? They have that ability. So to say... This is talking about the Jews. No, it's not. It's talking about people who say they are Jews and are not. People like Stephen Anderson. All these replacement theology heretics, these Hebrew roots morons. And they are morons too, by the way. Here we have Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved the hmm they're saying they are Jews but they're not 
has nothing to do with the physical Jews over in Israel right now. Weird, weird system that he has here. But now we'll actually go into the time of Jacob's trouble, and we're going to look about this thing of, you know, is that time, and it's called the time of Jacob's trouble too, by the way, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. The Bible never uses the term the tribulation or the great tribulation for that seven-year period, okay, as a title. It's a description, but never a title, right? That's very important to understand that. Because again, why do they say the tribulation? Because if they say the time of Jacob's trouble, you just do a little bit of research in the Bible and you say Jacob is another name for Israel. So it's a time of Israel's trouble. It's so very easy to understand it that way. That's why Anderson and his ilk have to cover that up. And they say, oh, it's the, the tribulation, the great tribulation. That's not the title. There is no title like that in your King James Bible. But let's look here in Revelation chapter 5. Here we are, chapter 5, verse 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Well, according to Andersnake, the tribes are no more. Why would they make a specific point that Jesus, what tribe he is part of? It's kind of weird, isn't it? Turn next to Revelation chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Hello. <laughs> you paying attention? Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Jerusalem. Oh, but the nation of Israel is no more. You don't really see anything about it over there. It's just done. Then why does do Moses and Elijah come back, as I've been saying in these studies, What's the purpose of bringing back the two greatest men revered the most by Orthodox Judaism? Moses, the law, Elijah, the prophets. Why are you bringing them back to the earth? To, pre to preach to Gentile Christians? To preach to the body of Christ and do great signs and wonders to confirm the word of the body of Christ? Huh? No, you bring them back for the Jews, for the nation of Israel. unless you're a replacement theology heretic. But the point is, they're over there, they're doing all these prophesyings and you know, all this other stuff and signs and wonders, and the Antichrist kills them, and they lie, their dead bodies lay in the streets of Jerusalem. But Israel's not, not mentioned in the book of Revelation. It's just kind of, it's not there. Sure, Anderson. We understand where you're coming from. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Of course, Anderson would probably try to say this is Mary, you know, like all Catholics would. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his, trail, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought, brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. You say, well, see, Brian, it's obviously a reference to Mary, because she was the one that brought forth the man-child, and he's to rule all nations with a rod of iron. So it's, it's obviously a reference to Mary. Okay, when did Mary run into the wilderness, and God fed her for a thousand two hundred and three score days? When did that happen? No, you see, it's a reference to the nation of Israel and the 12 stars that are about her head. You know what they are? The 12 tribes. Reference to Israel. 
you know, you know, future plans for the nation of Israel. I'll try to say it slow so some of you Andersonites can understand me. You know, I mean, maybe if you can like take what I just said and play it even slower in slow motion so that it can get through that thick skull of yours. There's no plans for the nation of Israel in the future. Sure, yeah, right. Revelation chapter 13, verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Hmm. Ties in perfectly with uh, Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse 15, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Huh. He sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Standing in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. You see how things tie together in the New Testament? Revelation chapter 15, verses 2 and 3. There you have it. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the name, number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. So again, you have saints in the time of Jacob's trouble, people that were killed in that time, and there's a difference. Some of them are singing the song of Moses, and others singing the song of the Lamb. Hmm. And I believe it's a clear reference to Jews and saved Gentiles. You say, how do you know that? Go back to Revelation chapter 7. 144,000. After this, a great multitude of all nations. It's really not that hard, people. You just kind of compare Scripture with Scripture, and it works out if you're saved and the Holy Spirit of truth can guide you into all truth. Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay, let me put up a little picture for you here. Um, the Euphrates River is over near Israel. Okay, now to Anderson and his followers. All right, I'm going to tell this to you nice and slow so that you understand. The river Euphrates is in that area of the world over there. It's not in Tempe, Arizona. Okay? All right? You see, the events of prophecy are happening, happening in a geographic location. I mean, why, are the, why is the river being dried up for the way of, to prepare the way of the kings of the east to come in and, you know, try to kill the remaining Jews that survive this time? Um, why is that there if God is done with the nation of Israel? And his focus is now on the body of Christ that's there for the first part, according to Anderson, then leaves and then the 144,000 are raptured down. I mean, the guy is such an idiot. I mean, there's no nice way for me to put I'm, you know, I'm trying to get through the thing and trying to be a nice guy and whatever else, but there's just no nice way to put this stuff. And it all goes back to denying the clear teachings of Scripture. That's why I want to be rough on Anderson. It all goes back to him bringing tremendous reproach upon the body of Christ, making the Jewish people think that we hate them, making the Jewish people think, and the Catholics, of course, you know, that they, they can take Stephen Anderson and they can promote him and say, look, look, see, crazy King James only guy. And he doesn't even represent what we believe. All right, one more place here, Revelation chapter 19. There we have chapter 19 of Revelation. Chapter 19, verses uh, 19 through 21. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he had deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. 
So the Lord Jesus Christ comes in. First of all, one of the judgments in the time of Jacob's trouble, dry up the river Euphrates so that these kings here, they're coming to wipe out those remaining Jews. Okay, the ones that fled into the wilderness, like we read about in Revelation chapter 12 there, you know, with the woman with the 12 stars above her head, Israel, you know, she's nursed of God in the wilderness. See, the Jews are out there in the wilderness. The way of the kings is prepared. They come in to try and wipe them out. Jesus Christ comes back with us, his saints. It's kind of interesting. How do we get up there if we wait till the end of the time of Jacob's trouble to go up? You know, okay. But we're coming back with Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ looks down and he wipes out that army. The kings of the earth wipes them out. And all the fowls are filled with her flesh too, by the way. So if you're not saved and you make it into that time and you're part of the Antichrist army, you're going to be bird food. Better get saved. All right, two more video clips to watch here, and then we'll move on to the last uh, Saul video. So let's watch. Every day. Therefore, Matthew 24, 24 cannot be referring to the Jews or Israel. When it says the elect there, not being deceived, it can only be referring to a Holy Spirit indwelled, born again, child of God, because we as Christians will not be deceived by the Antichrist. We're saved. We have the Holy Ghost. And uh, we've been enlightened. We will not be deceived. But listen, the Jews are already deceived. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, as we as Christians, we won't be deceived. The guy's not even a Christian. And he makes his living deceiving people. You know, and there are Bible-believing Christians, you know, that are new, that are just green in the whole thing. And they, you know, green meaning they're, they're young in the faith, okay? You don't know what that means. The rookies, whatever. Novices. And you have these new Christians, and Stephen Anderson's deceiving them. He's deceiving them, and then he says, we as, the, as Christians won't be deceived while he's deceiving people. Then, you know, oh, we as Christians wouldn't be deceived by the Antichrist. Oh, please, please. <laughs> you know, Christians, if we went, if Christians, if the body of Christ went into the time of Jacob's trouble, most of them would be deceived by the Antichrist. Okay. Very few would even understand what's going on. Most would probably end up taking the mark of the beast. And they lose their salvation, you know, which would put in contradiction with Pauline epistle teachings that you don't lose your salvation. You're sealed under the day of redemption. So again, another proof of pre-trib rapture. But my point is, oh, Christians wouldn't be deceived by the Antichrist. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Let's watch the last little clip here. Now, the only people that will argue with the math that I've just presented and the evidence that I've just presented are just people who don't understand math and don't understand science because what I've explained to you is a fact. That's the way numbers work. That's the way exponents work. Again, he exalts science and math over Bible prophecy. You know, the only people that will disagree with me are those people who don't understand science and math. You know, just like an atheist, atheistic uh, professor or somebody would attack Bible-believing Christians. That's exactly what Anderson's saying. You know? Oh, you're a, one of those Bible-believers. You believe the prophecies and all the other things. You believe it word for word and whatever else. You don't understand science and math. That's what Anderson's saying. Rejecting the clear prophecies of Scripture that God has plans, future plans for the nation of Israel. He rejects it and then points at us Christians that stand for the Bible and says, you just don't understand science and math. Just incredible.